All of us said, Amen. All right. Let's get into it. Jesus, the real Christmas story. Um, I have a text for you that doesn't look like a Christmas text, but it is. So let's look at it. It's found in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. And the scripture says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, Christmas, Christmas is all about Jesus. And um, it's, it is not, by the way, a pagan festival. Some people, even church people say, eh, it's a Christmas day, the pagan. I think this is the day the Lord has made. And our job is to rejoice and be glad in it. Every day God has made. Now, we are celebrating the Lord's birthday. And the fact is, uh, you may not have been born on that day or on this day. But he was born on one day. Even I have a confusion in my own life, you know. I have two birth dates. One is 25, which is the real one, I'm told. And the other one is 26, the day, yeah, the same March. What happened was in those days, you had to go to the so-called market offices or the immigration, and they had to register the child. I, uh, within 21 days, my father went on the 22nd day. I don't know what he ran out of a bus for. I don't know what he did, what happened. So they put me on the 26th. I have a confusion, you know. And I'm sure some of you also with confusions like that. And some of you probably don't know when exactly you were born, right? Uh, people get, you know, the people get it. Worried about this day being a pagan. I don't care what the day says. I'm interested in celebrating this day. It could, it could, have, been, it could have been a March 25th. <laughs> you know, who knows? I don't care. So if it, if, if it, consi it coincides with anything pagan, well, so be it. But I am personally worshipping Jesus. Anyway. Christmas is about him. Hey, he's got his name. So our text is, is really very different, very special, actually. Uh, we'll look at the text. Now, our text is talking about Jesus, the one person appearing in three different ways and three different forms in Scripture. And we are not talking here about the Trinity. We're talking about one person, Jesus. And so if you look at it, you'll see that he firstly came as a babe, as a man. And then secondly, he died as the lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. And he died and raised and he was and he seated on the right hand side of the father. And also our text talks about him returning and he comes back as king, king over all and lord over all. So as you will observe and in scripture, he was worshipped as a babe, if you recall, and the shepherds and angels and so on. Right now, he's worshipped as the Lamb of God in heaven. Nobody else could even open some of the seals that are found there, but he was able to. And then he will be worshipped when he returns, when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And... And, and together with this text, and I'm going to unpack it in a minute, this text, there's another one I want you to look at simultaneously. It's found in Colossians chapter 3. And this 
alludes to the same thing as we read this now, but except this is about us. This is what's happened to us. We're talking about the real story, the real Christmas story. And it says in verse 1, if then you were raised with Christ, you must remember that other text said he was raised to sit in the heavenly realms. And now it's saying, if you then uh, were raised with Christ, and that is a position, a fact, seek those things which are above where Christ is, Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you died. Here it is. He died, you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. So you, you're here, but you're not here. You're a whole new species of human being. You have, you have uh, God has come into your life, and now you're a new creation. You're here as a person in Christ, but you're also seated with him there. That's a, that's a given. That's a fact. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Or when, and then it says, and when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So you're there, and uh, you're not really here, but you're there. And some of you are not all there. Hmm? So you're here, and you're there. And then it says you're coming again with him. Amazing, isn't it? So, so as I said, it alludes to the same text we read earlier. So you need to go through, unpack this for yourself, understand it. So we are called to receive this gospel as a babe. We are called to be a babe and to humble ourselves as we would hear this gospel. I said a lot of things already in a few seconds. And you think, boy, that blowing my mind. I'm here, I'm not here, I'm there. And I'm also living here. I'm a whole new creation. And yet I have a whole new life. I have a new life, really. Go have a life. I have a life, a whole new life. That other old one is gone. And then it says we are to receive the gospel as a child, as a babe. We too have to become like a babe. To humble ourselves as a child and to believe the gospel. The secondly is also calling us the scriptures. He's calling us to take up the cross. In other words, to die on a daily basis. And to be crucified with Christ. Even though we're here, he says, have this mind that was in Christ. Change your thinking about what it is that's going on with you right now. We are called to take up the cross and be crucified with Christ. And then it says also, we will return with him when he appears. So let's put it together. When, when he came as a babe, by the way, it was not the beginning of his life. So we celebrate Jesus, uh, Jesus' birth as if. That's the first time he ever came. No, he didn't come. That's not the first time he came. Yeah, he, when he did come, he took a humble place, a very vulnerable place. Uh, Philippians 2, that one we read just now, says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And that, of course, as I said also, this is our road. We are being called to be babes to receive this gospel in faith to humble ourselves and receive this great salvation. Many people are not really humble because they believe they can make it to God on their own. And even church people really believe that. I'm telling you, you are saved by grace, God's grace. So he did come as a babe, but he existed before. We talk about the pre-existence of Christ. Um, he existed as the son of God. Look at it in Colossians chapter 1. Read this one with me. Colossians 1, verse number 15, talking about Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. You've seen his image. Yeah, he is. But he's the image of the God who is invisible. And it says, it's the firstborn over all creation, Christ. Firstborn over all creation. In other words, there was no, nothing else before him. He was him. So it says, for by him all things were created 
that are in heaven and, and that are on the earth, visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. See, he didn't just come as a babe. He was here a long time ago. He made all of this happen. So here is a God, going back to Philippians 2, that text, verse number 6 says, and who being in the form of God, he has one form, he was in the form of God, it did not consider it robbery to be equal with God because he is as the trinity of God, Father, Son, and Spirit, they are all one. But he made himself of no reputation uh, when he was asked to, to give up his throne to become a man. He made himself of no reputation, taking the form. Here's that word again. The second form, second way, second uh, appearance. Taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. Walking here with us. And then being found in appearance as a man, he looked at himself, here's God who was who was not consider, didn't consider it equal to be a robbery to be equal with God, he now found himself as a man. Uh, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And because of this, whenever you see a therefore in the text, you must ask why that therefore is there for. It was because of what he said before. Therefore, verse 9 says, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. No, no, he was there, but this is now different. He is the Lamb of God. And the stuff that you read in Revelation that he was able to do that nobody else was able to do was because he paid a major price to save us. And so we must be very thankful, I tell you, people. It, we shouldn't become like, you know, uh, people that don't really understand or care. We, 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 our whole life, we're, we're really dependent on him. Yeah, we're, we're, we owe it to him. And so, and the scary thing is, he's coming back. And for especially scary for those people that won't come back with him. That have lived and died here without him. Without having received him and taken him in. That is scary. And so he existed before. And, and, and when it was time, uh, fullness of time, he was introduced to the world. He was born very miraculously under miraculous circumstances. In Matthew 1, 23, it says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. This is the first time this is happening. Even Joseph was six and seven. He says, you are, you are what? He says, I'm pregnant. No, it can't be. Oh, you got another man. Hmm? You took somebody else. Who's that guy? God, really, it was so far-fetched for him, even him, he wanted, the only thing he wanted to do was divorce that girl. I don't blame him, do you, for thinking that way? Hello? Now, we know the story, right? And we look at that and say, ah, come on, come on, Joseph, you can do this, eh? But just think about it, here's a guy who's thinking about his virgin, and he wants to you know, enjoy this gal the rest of his life and then they're just about getting married. He's engaged to her and then found out that she, that he is, um, that she is in, uh, pregnant. Crazy. But here is a virgin whom God had come to live in. And instead of um, impregnating her through the usual way, God would have break through from the inside, coming out to the whole world, breaking out 
to the world and therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign Isaiah 7 says behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Jesus or Emmanuel this text in Isaiah was written hundreds of years before this Matthew one hundreds of years and so the prophet was able to see the sign and this is a sign what's a sign a sign is something you and I must be aware of must become open to we must have our eyes opened if you want to make it you want to really make it with God and in him then you need to watch the signs the signs are in the text the signs are not in the in the air coming out from this or that the other people create all kinds of signs for themselves but I tell you God is giving us his word so we too as as individuals in the world are awaiting introduction the spirit can woo us, bring us in, and then he can send us if we're open. And all who have truly come to Jesus will have this experience of being called to surrender and being sent. I'm not sure that many people have this experience, so it's very foreign to them. What is this? I thought I'm just joining a religion. I'm going to be you know, a nice, clean person in the, in the church. I don't smoke, don't drink, don't do anything. I want to find a good wife, get married, and live my life. And then um, go to checkers, buy food, eat it, and then and, and live my life, grow up, have some children, maybe grandchildren, and then die peacefully, and then um, hopefully make it to heaven. That's what I call a, an existence. It's not life. But the Lord is calling us. And so Jesus was born as a babe, and then he died as the Lamb of God. And this was announced by John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God. What's a Lamb of God? In, this, in, in, in the Bible, we talk about substitution. Substitution. He, Jesus, became our substitute. What does that mean? We should have died. Because of our sin, we should have died. But he became our substitute. In other words, he took the bullet for us. He died in our place. So when he died, and for those of us that believe in him, we too died with him on the cross. He died, we died. What he did was he took all of Adam, the whole race, the human race, and he nailed Adam on the cross. He died. Adam died. And the good news is all these people, they don't know. They're eating cream crackers and cheese now, but they don't know that salvation has already been paid for them. But they have to appropriate it, you understand? And until then, they, it's not theirs. It's there, it's done, it's a done deal. And for those that believe in Jesus, humble themselves as a babe, come before the Lord and say, Jesus, I trust you for salvation. Until then, uh, heaven is not their home. We need to receive. So Jesus died as a lamb. He became our substitute. When he died, we died. We should have died without all of this, but he took our place. He says, Father, I will die for them. And so he loved the world so much that he gave his son for us. That whoso believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, scripture says. So we too, when he died, we died. And so when he was raised, we too was raised. And when he was raised to sit with, with Father God on the right hand side in the heavenly realms, we too were raised to sit with him. Far above all principalities and powers, here we are. And that's what I was read, I read to you already. So there are new things happening in heaven currently. There's a new song and there's a whole lot of other things going on. The Lord is busy working. And there's a war that's happening right now for the souls of men. The other thing that is happening is that the, a house is being prepared. Jesus is preparing a house. You remember? He says in John 14, I'm... Uh, don't be afraid or don't be anxious for anything. I'm, uh, you believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you. If, you. if it were not so, I would have told you. And where I am, you may be. I'm coming back to get you. He said that, hear that. And so he's preparing a house, he said. 
What is the house? The house is none other than the house of God, the bride, the church. Because he inhabits his people. His people now become the temple of God. Hello? I'm talking from, uh, from, on two fronts. One, our, our view from the heavens and also our view on earth. But yeah, we are people living here, but we're really not here. We belong to him and we're with him. And that's why we're over all our circumstances, all our troubles. We are uh, over all the principalities and powers. That's why the devil can't hold us captive. You got to take, take some of that stuff, think it through carefully, carefully. So our house is being prepared. He's preparing his house. And the house is none other than the church, the people of God. He's preparing his bride. And when he returns, scripture says he will return and he comes. And this time he comes as a Lord of Lords. And then the text I read to you in Colossians. We too will appear with him. He returns as a glorified, inaugurated king. He's a king. That's going to be a wonderful day. But it's going to also be a very sad day for lots of people. Because I think he's waiting for a lot of people right now to make their peace with the Lord. That's what Christmas is all about, people. Jesus is a real story, a Christmas story. This is what it's all about. And that something has been done on your behalf and for you which you need to appropriate, which you need to take, humbling yourself, take it in, and believing this gospel. And as he was worshipped as a babe and worshipped in heaven as the lamb, when he returns, every knee, your knee, will bow. Every tongue, your tongue, will confess that Jesus is the Lord. Are you ready for his coming? Are you ready? Are you a Jesus worshiper? Because what is, what's happening is he's looking for you. God is looking for you. He's wanting you. Before it's too late, he's coming back for a bride prepared. And he's prepared before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. He saw us and he called us. Amen. I love you, man. I've got to send you early, you know why? It's Christmas, biryani, all that. I was flying through this, as you could tell. Would you stand with me, please? Now, what if, what if, the Lord would have come now. What if you'd walk in the door, or if, as the scripture says, every knee or every eye will see him when he comes? Are you ready? See, are you ready? Are you, are you happy to meet, meet with him? I remember, you know, my, my first few weeks in the Lord. First few weeks, I didn't understand too much, but uh, you know, I just come out of serious drug addictions and whatnot. Um, my music, my band, my rock band, and whatnot I came out of that. And then um, I think uh, I was, I was, I got, I quit drugs. I don't think I went to church yet. Yeah, I might have. I'm not sure. So I, I quit drugs, I know, before I went to church. And then I was smoking still some cigarettes, and no one t told me at any time, hey, you must stop smoking. You know, this is not good for God, you know. God to live in the same place. No one said anything to me. I just, I just felt like, you know what, this is God's temple. I need to take care of it. He's building his house. This is his house. I need to take care of it. I quit other things. I walked away from my girlfriends. I walked away from... My other friends that uh, did nonsense, I walked away, I ran away. Now, one of the last things was this. So I was walking down Archmary Arcade. For those of you uh, in the cheap seats, you might know where Archmary Arcade is. But anyway, it's a place where in the city you would, um, 
Yeah, well, anyway, I was saying to the Lord, I think the smell of smoke in that arcade was really too much for me to bear. So I said to the Lord, you know, uh, don't come now. <laughs> because, because I want to buy one more pack of cigarettes. If you don't mind, one more pack. <laughs> one more pack. Uh, don't come now, please. So I did. I bought that one pack. And I started smoking, you know, one way, nonstop, for the next couple of hours. By the time I got home, and uh, whatever I did, I walked back from home to my other friends with this nice long cigarette in my mouth. And I came, as I walked, some of my friends I met, and said, hi, what's up? And then he says, uh, hey, give us a cigarette. And so um, I gave him one. I said, anyway, this is my last, my last cigarette I'm smoking. These people are so sharp, these people. You'll never believe, eh? These people, you think they are messed up people in the street. He said, if that's your last cigarette, what the packet is doing in your pocket? <laughs> eh, sharp, these people. But faith entered me that day, faith. I looked at him, and I thought, boy, this is bad. Anyway, I just pulled it out and gave it to him. I said, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I, say, I say all that because, I, 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 you know, again, it is not about smoking and drinking and whatever else that people think they do. Salvation is about a Jesus who is either in the heart or not in the heart. If Jesus is not there, you can't quit anything. You can't stop anything. You can't anything. Only Jesus can do that, help you in your life. Take away the sin, which is your rejection of him, the biggest thing that can happen. So I hope you ready yourself like that because he's coming. And your knee will bow. Your tongue will confess. If you're not ready, you will be left out of this whole plan. So this morning, Christmas 2022... I'm, I'm going to pray, and I want you to maybe pray with me and say, you know, Samuel, I, I want, I want the Lord this morning. And then you can, you can do this right now, wherever you are. You can say to the Lord, I want you in my life. Come into my heart and make me your child. You can pray that. So I'm going to pray for you. This is Christmas, and you need to get ready. You need to get ready for his return before it's too late. So, Father, I pray your blessings on your people. And as we have gathered together in your name, we've come, Lord, to love you, to serve you, to work with you. Thank you for your word. Your word, Lord, is really powerful. And your word is at the same time so comforting, so merciful, full of grace. And you wait for us so long. You waited and you waited and you waited. Thank you for waiting for me that I could get in. And there are those that are here who have not got in. And you are waiting for them, each one. And I pray, Father, that you will draw each one, those that are outside of you, today, this morning, draw them, I pray. So I want to pray for you, for those of you that uh, really want the Lord. Would you maybe, wherever you are, this, raise your hand and put it down again. I'm not going to ask you to come out here. I just want you to raise your hand, put it down. I can see you, yes. Thank you. And I'll pray for you. As I pray, you, you also pray with all your heart and say, Lord Jesus, I want to be ready. I want to be made ready when you come. When you come, I want to come with you. Thank you for making me sit down with you in the heavenly realms. Thank you for giving me uh, the, the position that you've paid for with your own blood, your life. And you're calling me to follow you, to carry a cross and to come along with you so that we will be sent in your name. I pray your blessings on each one here today, Father. For those of us that are opening their hearts for the first time, I pray, make yourself very real. Make yourself very real to them, Lord. 
We love you. We thank you for drawing us. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Your blessings on us today, this week. In Jesus' name. And all of us said, Amen.